Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. In this mini tutorial series, I will show you how to create this whole animation from scratch in Blender. A lot of people in the world will be stuck home for a while because of the COVID-19. This is why I've decided to provide this tutorial for free. But if you want to support me, you can set whatever price you want when you are accessing the files for the first time. Just enter a price of zero if you want it for free or whatever more if you want to help me on this one. First of all, take good care of you and I hope you will enjoy this tutorial. All the source files are already available on Gumroad and the different video will be available for download as soon as they are published on YouTube. I originally made this project during a training week with my students. The idea was to teach them the fundamentals of 3D modeling, shading and a bit of animation. Right at the beginning of this week, I've decided to work on a Game Boy and I was planning to create some artwork that was close to what Jonathan Ball from Pocket Studio generally does. He generally creates vibrant and very complex artwork based on very simple characters. And this is a very good way to create appealing artwork and to work with the basis of 3D modeling. This is a beginner friendly tutorial where I will show all the steps to create the final render from scratch. All the different Blender files for each step are provided and also the different textures are provided too. The provided file may vary a bit compared to the final results because they were done during the training week, but I've also included the final file I've been doing while recording this tutorial. We will be following a pretty classical pipeline. We will first model, then we will go into shading, lightning, rigging our character, making its walk animation, and then creating a rapid composition with the different elements animated to create the final render. Let's get started. As usual, I will start by removing everything, then adding an empty image. Go to the empty option and load the reference image provided with the files. Then I want to properly scale this image. So I will add a simple cube and I will enter the different values that I can read on the blueprint. Beware as Blender units are set to meters by default. Since our units are in millimeters, make sure that it's 0.09 for 90 millimeters, etc. Then I will go into the reference picture option of the MT and I will scale it so that it fits the box I created that has the correct size. I will oftenly switch between the solid view mode and the X-ray mode that you can activate by pressing Alt plus Z. I'm positioning the reference image and scaling it using its option so that then I can move it as an object without destroying its scaling. If I press then Alt G, Alt R or Alt S, it will return to this base position with the correct scaling and the correct proportion compared to the real size box. Once I figure the correct value to get the correct proportion, I will just duplicate it and rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degree and place it on the side so that I will be able to have this blueprint whether I'm in top view or inside view. Once I'm done with this, then I was willing to separate my mesh into two pieces. So I've entered edit more. Then I have pressed control R to activate the loop cut tool and cut it into half. Selected the top point and press P to separate the selection. But it's not useful since we will be using only the top face. So what you can do is simply enter edit mode and select the top face, duplicate it and press P to separate. This will create a new object, cube.001, that will be editing in a few seconds. So as told before, I will get rid of the unwanted vertices and I will only keep the top ones. This will leave me with a simple plane and I will use the shortcut control shift B that will allow me to create a vertex bevel. So we will select only those three vertices, press Ctrl Shift B and scale up. 
then I will increase the number of cuts to four segments and scale so that it fits the corners. I always, I always, I generally use a pair number of segments so that I make sure that I get a vertex aligned with the original one. A common mistake that beginners do because a lot of tutorials show you this way of modeling by using box modeling and then using a ton of loop cuts to increase the geometry is that they destroy their shapes. Because when you are box modeling this way, you're not planning what you're doing. And then you may have curvature that is not good at all. The technique I always teach to my student is to isolate their main shape, their proper shape, using face loops. I've been modeling for industrial design for more than two years quite intensively, so I've developed a lot of technique that allow me to model quite efficiently with nice topology. So it might be frightening here when you see this, but you will see that we are going to get to this result very fast. My first tip is to use the inset face as often as possible. Here we have the end guns we have generated by beveling the vertices. Now what I want is to isolate this nice shape by creating a face loop around the border. If I simply press I to activate the inset face tool, Blender will create this face loop for me and then I just have to press X to get rid of the inner face. I will select this loop and duplicate it and move it on the Z axis until I'm aligned with the next odd edge on our model. Now I want to connect those loops to create the side of our case. To do it quickly, I will use the F2 add-on by going into the preferences, add-on, search for F2 and activate it. This is a must use whenever you are modeling. Just select two vertices, place your 3D cursor in the direction you want to feel and press F and then repeat pressing F as many times as needed. Whenever you're completing like this a big chunk of geometry by filling it or extruding it, select every face, press Shift N to recalculate the normals. In most cases, every 3D software needs to know whether a face is pointing inside or outside of a mesh. Pressing Shift N in edit mode will recalculate this orientation and you can see this orientation in object mode by using the option in the overlay menu. Now that we know how to create simple volume with beveled corner properly, we will create the screen cover. As usual, we will start with a plane. But if I don't care where my 3D cursor is, this plane will be generated in the wrong place. So I will first select the top edge loop by double clicking it, and then I will press Shift S cursor to select now my 3D cursor is in the right position. I can add a plane and scale it down and then make it fit the blueprint for the screen. The process is then exactly the same as before. I will press Ctrl Shift B to bevel the free corner using four cuts, then press Ctrl Shift B and bevel the fourth corner. I will insert the face, then I will get rid of the inner face and here I am with my face loop. The issue here is that I'd like to extend this border. The problem is that I can't use the scaling tool because the shape is not square based, so it won't be scaled homogeneously. What I can do instead is press G twice and hold Alt and confirm with Enter. This will allow me to extend the loop slide tool and create a border outside of the boundaries. Then we can use the loop cut tool to align our cut with the blueprint and get rid of this face loop. Just a note, you should keep this gap a little tighter because I've made it quite a little too large. I've corrected it in the very end of the modeling stage, but if you do it right now, it will be easier than in the end. I will repeat the process for the screen and the screen glass and also for the LED recess. Once we'll be done with this, this will be the time to add our subdivision modifier that will allow us to increase the resolution of, of our mesh procedurally, meaning that we will be able to smooth the surface and the corner 
keeping the resolution and the topology we've just created. So it will still be very easy to edit our mesh. In the meantime, you can see that I haven't placed the recess for the LED properly. What I can do is use the snapping tool, the magnet icon here, set to vertex, press G and Z and snap it onto one of the vertices of the outer edges of the screen. I will then proceed with a few extrusion and loop cuts to create the inside extrude here and I will switch to matcap with the metallic look here. This will allow us to check the reflection on our model. This is a good way to double check if the surface is looking good. I will add the subdivision modifier, set it to 2 in the viewport. The subdivision modifier is increasing the geometry of my surfaces, making them smoother. The way it smooths the surfaces is by creating additional geometry and interpolating the position between two points. This results in smoother surfaces, but it can also curve surfaces. And here you can see that our case is not straight anymore. This is because the subdivision modifier behaves a bit like a NURBS curve or a Bezier curve. So it will create an interpolation of the geometry between two points. One is the target, the two other are the direction, a bit like a vector. If we create a NURB curve here, we can see that we get this curvy shape based on different points in space. But if we align multiple points consecutively, the curve will become a straight line. So this is exactly what we have to do on our 3D model by using supporting edge loop or supporting loop cuts. What I like to do to create them is to use the Ctrl R shortcut, which is the loop cut shortcut. But then instead of multiplying it, I use the bevel by pressing Ctrl B and make sure that I extend it near the corners of the different parts of my mesh so that it will support the rounded edges or the rounded corner of our case. The benefit of the bevel modifier is that it will automatically evenly distribute the edge loop for me. The idea is to get supporting loop near the different corner of the mesh so that it will protect each corner and will keep each side perfectly straight. You can finally give depth to the different parts of the screen that are separated, the different panels, and bevel those edges to harden them. I will greatly increase the video speed while I'm just adding those supporting edge loop on the different on the different part of the screen elements and then we will be able to fill the different gaps. The fact that we have been working with those separated face loop allow us to get rid of any problem of running edge loop across your model. I always model this way and I always teach base modeling this way. Now I just need to connect the different parts of my mesh by pressing F and following the topology flow. I can finally connect the LED recess so you don't need to add those two loop cuts, don't add them. Because we will use the existing loop cut just beneath to connect the middle of the LED to this part. Just create a loop cut on the top part, it will go all around the frame and we can already foresee our final topology. So I will be messing around a bit because I've added those two loop cuts for nothing and I will have a hard time getting rid of them because I wasn't using the right shortcut. If you've done so, just double click to create those edge loop, press X and select edge loop, not edges. You'll see that you will get a nice and smooth result, then you can extrude the LED recess inward and add a bevel so that you will get an hardened edge. Once I'm done with this, I will fill the front face of the screen. So instead of extruding the screen, scaling it down and then trying to fill it manually, you can select the wall edge loop and press Ctrl F and select grid fill. 
If you have a pair number of vertices around your edge loop, it will automatically create a faces patch. This is a super useful tool. Then you have the pan and offset options that allow you to modify the pattern of this face patch. But in this case, it was already set properly. This is the end of part one for modeling. In the next video, we will see how to create the button a smart way and how to finish the wall model. In the meantime, if you want to support me, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. And if you want, go to my Gumroad page and check out my full courses.